Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. Today we have one of our physical games videos for you. This is the series where I show you some of the games I have picked up physically for the Switch in the last few months. We'll have a look at if there are any mandatory updates needed onto your system storage, have a look at the box art, see if anything comes inside and then I'll give you a mini review of sorts based on my initial impressions of the game. This episode has a slight twist on it in that I set myself a budget of £100 and had to pick up 10 physical Switch games for that price. I thought it'd be interesting to see how far we could stretch that money and what sort of games we'd be able to purchase. So which games have I bought, could I stay in budget, and ultimately were they worth it? Well, let's find out. So the first game I bought for the challenge, just over the £10 average at £10.99, was Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition. This 3D action adventure game with hack and slash combat first released in 2012 and was ported to the Switch in 2019. In doing so it joined the first game in the series and has since been followed by Darksiders 3 and spin-off game Darksiders Genesis in releasing on Nintendo's hybrid system. This is a great game which includes open world areas, a lot of verticality in levels which calls for climbing and wall running and there's an RPG element to it too with leveling up and a skill tree system. The downside to the Switch version is performance with the frame rates dipping at times especially in the open world areas and the resolution also taking a hit in an attempt to try and maintain 30 frames per second. It's a shame that this sequel doesn't include the option to choose a performance mode as the first game did and the lack of a patch in 3 years since its release is definitely a disappointment. But even with this I've really been enjoying the game and for me personally to play a 20 hour plus game that I wouldn't ever get enough time to play on the big screen to complete and for just £11 of course is a big deal meaning that I will put up with the performance issues but for everyone else just bear that in mind. The next one was a cheap one just to give some leeway for later games or to allow for a more expensive purchase later and this is Nippon Marathon. This is a crazy party game based around racing against a colourful cast of characters in order to win a big cash prize. It has a touch of Takeshi's Castle about it and you'll be having to avoid all manner of obstacles and projectiles from watermelons to dogs and even cyclists as you try to get to the finishing line. There is a storyline for each of the four characters but this is all about playing locally with friends and I think you can play with up to 8 people on the Switch although I've only tried it out in the 2 player mode. It's harmless fun and certainly worth the £5 I paid for it for a night's entertainment here and there with other people. So now being below the £10 per game average I kept the strong start up by getting Sayonara Wild Hearts for just £7.99. This is actually a very good game, I'd perhaps go as far to say a bit of a hidden gem which describes itself as a pop album video game. You play as a character called The Fool who speeds through levels avoiding obstacles and grabbing collectibles in order to get a high score and the zany story revolves around her journey after having her heart broken. It's a high score chaser with gold, silver and bronze medals up for grabs and the general aesthetic with the cold colour palette of blues and purples serving as a great backdrop for the low poly characters plus the music is a huge part of the experience as you weave through hazards and partake in the on screen battles and psychedelic scenarios. I was very pleasantly surprised with this one and play a level or two of it often returning to them in order to try and improve my scores. Next was another game for around the £8 mark, £7.95 to be precise, and it is The Legend of K Anniversary. This is a remastered version of a game which first came out for the PlayStation 2 in 2005, and it's a 3D platformer with an emphasis on combat. I've played this game and completed it in the past when it got a release on the Wii U, and it's a solid 3D platformer. I enjoyed the balance between platforming, dungeon sections and combat and feel that for the price this can be picked up for these days it's definitely worth checking out for fans of the genre. Yes it is an older game but it holds up pretty well and it will take most people a good 12 to 15 hours to finish. 
I will give a quick public service announcement and say that I found out the hard way on the Wii U version that as with the original there was a bug where if you left the second dungeon before finishing it a key that you needed would disappear and you'd have to start again. As much as I love you all I'm not willing to risk losing my save data to check if this is still the case or whether it's been patched but just don't leave the second dungeon and then you'll be fine. It's always a safe bet to pick up a few games for around £10 each as it ensures you stick within your budget and this one is Star Wars Pinball. Now I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan I must say but I do love Virtual Pinball and Zen Studios tables are absolutely fantastic. This collection includes 19 tables stretching back across a number of the movies and there are challenges to complete on each table and a really interesting online mode where you compete against other people's top scores and then can be promoted or relegated in a league system. What I like about this collection is that because you have all of the tables available to you, you can always partake in this game mode, something you may struggle with if you play the Pinball FX2 game as you have to buy every table in that app separately, so unless you own them all there will be weeks that you can't compete and could end up getting relegated because of it. Five games in and we are well on call so far, it's been quite a mix of games and graphical styles which is nice. Playing it safe again with another cheap pickup, this is Rad Rogers Radical Edition, which I bought for £6.99. This is a platform game which by the looks of it was heavily inspired by Rough and Tumble, a game that came out back in the day for the Amiga, having a touch of run and gun about it to go along with the platforming. It's an okay game, albeit trying very hard to replicate the attitude filled mascot characters of the 90s, and this Radical Edition includes new levels, bonus stages and playable characters, including Duke Nukem. You can also play through the adventure in two player co-op and for that price I would say it is worth grabbing although there are definitely better platformers and run and guns for that matter available on the Switch. I took a bigger chunk out of the budget for the next one by picking up the Hotline Miami collection. This includes both Hotline Miami and Hotline Miami 2 Wrong Number which first released in 2012 and 2015 respectively. They are both top down shooters where you are charged with killing everyone within a building or set of rooms but you do need to adopt a stealth approach at times or at least restrain from going completely gun ho as one hit and you'll have to retry the stage. The mask you choose to wear at the start will grant you a unique trait and you are graded by your performance at the end which gives an incentive to replay. It's blood soaked with 80s references and the pixel art is on point. I've only played the first game so far, a game I played through to completion on the Vita back in the day, so haven't got round to the sequel yet, but this is a great collection, and much like when I had it on the Vita, really suits the portable nature of the Switch perfectly. £16.95 for the two games is an absolute bargain and well worth picking up if you can find it. Next I found another game for £9.99, this time on Amazon and it's Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. A very solid addition for this price as the name implies that this brings together two classic puzzle games in Puyo Puyo and Tetris. You can play them as separate entities if you have a preference or there are modes that combine the two to create interesting hybrids and these do work well. As well as this you can play competitively in either local or online modes, again being able to mix between the games which acts as a good leveller. I'm pretty good at Tetris whereas my wife is better at Puyo Puyo so having the game switch as you play keeps things interesting. As well as this there is a story mode to play through with a number of challenges to complete. The biggest issue with this game when it released was that it was practically the same as its predecessor which made it a hard recommendation for owners of that first game. But at this price it was an absolute no brainer. Seems to be one that fluctuates price wise as do a few of the others on this list to be fair as the last time I'd looked it had gone up to £15 but one to keep an eye on as you can get it for a bargain price. There's a review on the channel if you want the full story, any games in this list with a review will have a card at the top right corner and a link in the top pinned comment. Next is a relatively recent release in Grow Song of the Evertree. I'd seen this in a local toy shop for £17 and had decided to get it for this challenge but when I went to grab it a few days later it had gone up to £22. I left it a couple of weeks and whilst in the same shop with my kids I noticed that it had now dropped down to £15 so I picked it up. It's a life sim with an overarching story about bringing the Evertree back to life although you can just take the game at your own pace and not worry too much about that. 
is set in a 3D environment and there are a number of quests to complete along the way. Unfortunately the game does suffer from performance issues at times, in some areas things will run fine but visit another and things begin to stutter quite considerably. It's a shame as the game itself is pretty decent and I don't regret the purchase, I've been playing it with my daughter and she doesn't really care about such things, but it does bring the package down overall and hopefully it will be patched soon. So one game left to get and with about a tenner left to complete the challenge, I actually came in below budget by finding Trine 4 for just £7.99. Trine is a series where you have to control three different characters, each with a unique moveset, and use each of these characters to navigate a number of levels and overcome a series of physics based puzzles and hazards. You have the wizard who is able to create boxes which will assist you with making big jumps, the knight whose sword will dispatch enemies and shield can be used as a platform, and the thief whose bow and arrow can make swinging across levels and grabbing items possible. It's nothing particularly new if you have played previous entries, especially the first two, although new abilities can be acquired as you play through this time. You can get a collection which has all four games on, although the first three games are download codes in the European version, plus you'll be paying a fair bit more if you want to find it these days. £7.99 for this one was an absolute steal in my opinion. Oh no, last night's avalanche laid waste to the bridge. Now how am I going to get to the mailbox? So there you have it, 10 games picked up and picked up for a price of £98.82. Coming in therefore at £1.18 under budget. What do you think of the games I picked up? I mean, obviously it's difficult when you're working to a budget, but for that price, I think I've done quite well there. A nice mixture of games, genres, and art styles. As I did say at one point in the video, these prices do fluctuate, of course, and some have changed since I bought them, but I just thought it would be an interesting challenge, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please do let me know of any games you've picked up in the comment section below. That's always my favourite part of these videos, is reading what games other people buy, and where they get them from, how much, where they worth it, that sort of thing. Please do stick it all in the comment section. If you are looking for eShop credit, you're not so much a physical collector. Don't forget you can get eShop cards via our website, switchup.gg. There will be a link to it in the top pinned comment. But on the theme of physical games, we also have a link to Play Asia if you want to import anything. Use the link and the code stated in that top pinned comment or the description of this video and you can save yourself 5% off of your order. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.